Hello? Hey, it's Alex from Swallow the Sun. How's it going? Oh, good, good, good. Well, uh, thank you for taking the time to do this interview. I sorry I couldn't make it work out last week, but I'm glad we can make it up make it work this week. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Like it it's uh, I'm at home now, so I'm I have nothing but the time. Alright, well uh, uh Century Media was uh, gracious enough to uh, send me the promo for the new triple album Sons from the North and I just gotta say that I love the entire triple album from start to finish. It just feels like such a great collection of what you guys are all about what made you guys so adventurous enough to try to put out a triple album Uh, i don't know maybe we are just stupid or something but it's (laughs) uh it's uh it's something we've talked talked about for years and um it's it's basically just to kind of expand our sound into kind of like more extreme in both ways like some something more softer and something like way heavier than we've done before and it's it's always like it being all the kind of like three aspects of our sound but we haven't really like ventured in, into them yeah i definitely say it is a good representation of what you guys are all about i mean the the first disc being more of the natural sound of you guys and then with disc two and three really showing off the extremes about the lighter and the more extreme sounds it's really cool to see yeah thanks thanks oh not a problem uh so uh with uh, the live aspect uh would the triple album be uh well represented when you guys uh are promoting the album live yeah i have no idea like <laughs> Of course, we are looking into playing as much as possible. And uh, for example, like uh, when we did the shows for uh, the Morning Never Came, a 10-year anniversary, I think we played more than two hours a night. So in theory, it's not impossible to get quite a like, good selection of the songs. But we haven't still rehearsed them live, so I kind of don't know which ones are going to work out and uh, which ones are like... Uh, um, and how we are exactly going to do some of them like uh, so, some of the acoustic ones might be like um, difficult to pull off live but uh, it's it's something we'll see soon enough like we are playing a show in Finland in two weeks and uh, then our tour starts in well in a month so I guess we'll, we'll know soon enough oh very cool uh, so with this being such an ambitious album of uh, putting out three albums of material was there anything left over that didn't make uh, the cut for any of the discs or uh, was everything that you guys recorded for this album uh, represented in the album I don't think we've ever recorded any songs that were left out of the albums so I guess this was like we recorded all of the songs and we didn't drop any uh, that's very cool to hear uh, so uh, with um, with all three discs uh, showing uh, the representation of Swallow the Sun, is there any particular disc that you feel the most proud of, or are you proud of all three of them? Well, obviously I'm proud of all of them. In the beginning, like I had, uh, I wasn't like uh, I had my suspicions about, uh, for example, the third album because I didn't see this kind of like really slow stuff as our forte kind of. But uh, I was more than happy to be wrong about that because I think that's my kind of like favorite right now one reason being it's something like we've kind of done before but not to this extent and uh, like the second album is uh, I I was uh, really looking forward to making that then again like uh, because it's something we did we did some acoustic shows with uh, like a smaller group like me and our singer and our guitar player and those were always like really cool I I liked them and I I felt that we can pull like that sort of stuff up so those two were something kind of like new and that's why I felt about the first album was like yeah yeah we've done this before but uh, then uh, when I got into it I was like hey, wait a minute there's lots and lots of new stuff like uh, this kind of a like new rhythmic feel to it and a uh, new kind of tonality so so yeah it's uh, I'm, I'm really happy how all of them turned out like because it, it could have been like it really difficult to pull off as many songs and as much music but i think we did it yeah that's always the one danger about putting out either a double album or a triple album is the feeling that there would be a lot of filler on the album yeah. but from every time that i listen to it i at least listen to all three albums about twice a day ever since i got the promo and it doesn't feel like there's any filler in there to me at all from the beginning to the end it feels completely natural and every song just feels absolutely great on it uh, 
thank you <laughs> very much. It's um, I, I think it's because the discs are so all the albums are so different. So it's uh, it's kind of like a, it's probably a better like a thing to have like the three completely different discs on it than uh, rather than to like kind of like mix them up so that there there would be acoustic songs on the first album in between the other songs because that kind of gives it a natural kind of rhythm like three acts and three completely different acts and that's probably why it works yeah i definitely think that was the great way to go about it if all three of them were mixed together it might not have had the same feeling as it is being separated the way that it is now yeah yeah Uh, so uh, of course with the album going to be coming out i'm sure it's a bit early to talk about any uh future material but with the new representations of the more lighter and the more extreme sides of the sound really being flourished on Sons from the North. Is this a representation of what you guys are going to be doing in the future? Honestly, I have no idea. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like getting the album recorded is so like close. Like it, it's not been a long time since we finished it. So that kind of like emptied at least my kind of like mental resources. So I haven't given any thoughts on new material. Real. But then again, I'm not too worried about it because uh, we've worked with this, we've been like together for what, 13 years? And uh, I, especially after the third, uh, three first albums, uh, I, I think we kind of found a really good way to work. And uh, uh, after that, it's always come really naturally, kind of like how we sound. And there's always been new influences, like if, for example, on New Moon, there was some black metal kind of stuff, and uh, also on Emerald Forest. And uh, on Emerald Forest, we started to bring in more, even more, like type of negative influences out and it's it's just like kind of like all these changes come kind of naturally and we've been able to make the music sound like follow the sun even though it's somewhat different than what it was in the beginning yeah that is definitely true i mean you look at the very first of all the sun album and then you look in at uh, the brand new triple album and it definitely sounds like you guys have progressed a lot in your sound but it still has that core sound to it yeah i, I think like you, you could mix uh, any uh, mix songs from the first album and the latest album and the, it would still sound a co- coherent album oh very much so uh so uh getting into the live aspect of the show uh, of course you guys have some shows that are going to be coming up within the next month and in two weeks is there any other touring plans uh coming up for say 2016 yeah 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 yeah. we've always loved touring a lot like uh, we have uh, toured a lot and uh, so it's obviously like because we kind of took a break from it for two years or so so we really want to do it as much as possible so it's uh, we are we are still working on it and uh, let's say north america is in the plans for the spring but uh, we haven't still decided on anything yet oh very cool uh i I know the last time that you guys were here at least from my memory where I'm from in Minnesota, uh, it was a tour with uh, Catatonia and Orphanland, which I... No, 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 we came back after that. Oh, you did? Uh, it was, yeah, uh, twice, I think. Oh, yes, yes, yes. No, 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 uh, actually, yeah, we came back once. We came back with the creator and accept. Oh, yes, yes, that's right. That's right. I, I apologize. I just remember the last time that it... Uh, came around my area but uh yeah i was just gonna say that it's uh it's been a little bit since you guys have been here and i know with this new release that a lot of people in north america will definitely be looking forward to seeing you guys here again yeah yeah there's a lot of headlining stuff that you guys are able to do now and of course with all the material that you have it makes it easier to be able to accomplish a headlining show how does it compare doing the headlining shows as to say doing more of the support slots in north america and other territories uh, well the support slots always have the kind of like the problem of ta- limited time because we've talked so many times in there and played like five songs of what the fuck about it. <laughs> it's stupid like it. but then again it's something you have to do anyway and I, I think we've always been able to like kind of like craft a set for those short sets as well as well but uh, like obviously we'd like to play uh, headlining stuff more but we, 
we are not in a situation where we cannot do headlining in all the territories. Which I would hope would change in the future because uh, being able to see headlining stuff from you guys in North America would be a really cool thing to be able to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, uh, we'd love that. But it's uh, at this point, uh, honestly, I did, we'd have to probably do some research like whether it would be like feasible or not, like whether we can pull it off or not. Because it's, it's really expensive, so it's a high risk at this point. But then again, it would be a high reward as well. Oh, very true. Of course, with uh, 2015 being a huge time for you guys recording Sons from the North 1, 2, and 3, have you had any time to listen to any other music that's come out this year? Uh, not really. Like, <laughs> maybe maybe some, but it was funny, like, because I was working on my keyboard arrangements for, I think it was all three and a half months or something. It was basically, a, like, a, not a full day job, but a, let's say half a day job. And uh, after that, I had this really intense ten six day studio session after which when I got everything on tape I didn't listen to any sort of music for at least three months so uh, I think it was September when I actually started to listen to music again so I haven't really had any time to look into new releases well it definitely makes sense I mean with a recording of the new Swell the Sun album and of course just being in a band in general you don't always get the time to check out new music uh, yeah yeah and it's, uh, it's also like because we have day jobs, most of us, uh, it's, uh, I've been very busy with that, so it's uh, also like that combined with uh, making the music and uh, then, uh, because I also worked on the album covers and all that shit, I've been so like, kind of like busy and stressed out, I haven't really paid any attention to new music, I've been listening to some like old, old music, but that's about it. Oh, definitely nothing wrong with that. Uh, so, uh, getting back into the recording process, uh, was there anything that you did differently as far as keyboard arrangements or any new sounds that you're doing with the keyboards this time around? Yeah, there's uh, plenty, especially on the third album, like there's this uh, pretty ridiculous horn arrangement, <laughs> what the fuck ever, like brass stuff, and uh, that, that was fun, like, because uh, on, on that one, uh, you really got to kind of like let go of any sort of like boundaries I've had before. And uh, then um, I, I think there's uh, like this kind of like shoegazing type of sound on the second album we've never had before. So so yeah, there was plenty like uh, I did differently, but uh, it's I have a, I have this kind of like approach that all the kind of like uh, sound should be based around certain kind of idea, and uh, then you can bring in influences like uh, one or two different things per song or something, so it doesn't become like kind of a mess. Oh, with uh, all the uh, different uh, influences like on the second disc the more uh, shoegazy post-rock feel and on the third disc having more of the extreme slower darker feel to it did that help you feel inspired in the album uh, not having to create the same swallow the sun feel to it every time um I don't, I don't really know, like, it's, uh, because it's, uh, like, the whole, kind of, like, uh, I think after, like, uh, Plague of Butterflies or something, we kind of realized that it doesn't really matter what we do, because we know our sound already so well that we can basically do anything, and it still will sound like Swallow the Sun, so it didn't really, it's, it's, it's kind of like uh, it gives you freedom kind of to do stuff because uh, you know how to implement it into the band songs. I, I, I don't know. It's uh, uh, Yeah, I'm not sure what's your answer, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's definitely okay. I mean, it just sounds like uh, Swallow the Sun has their sound. It doesn't matter what territory that you guys are hitting on. It's still going to have that Swallow the Sun feel to it. Yeah, it's, it's not like we are going to do whatever techno or polka or whatever, like, completely random. But uh, we can take it in from lots of different sources of uh, kind of like inspiration and uh, uh, influences without it sounding like a, uh, like a patchwork of something. Oh, very cool. Uh, so I noticed a couple weeks back that Heartstring Shattering was released as the first single. What was the decision to make that as the first single? I don't really know. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, uh, I, I was really busy at that time when we decided uh, to start working on that song. I was really busy with the 
album cover so it was like uh, when I saw that on the email I was like ah oh, yeah yeah whatever and uh, then I started thinking about it and uh, I actually thought that it doesn't really matter that much which song we picked because uh, honestly we could have picked any one of them and they would represent, represent the album pretty well and they are all good anyway so yeah definitely anything on the first disc is a great representation of where you guys are at right now and uh I did see that there was a song from disc two. I did not see which song, but I did see that one from disc two was just released, I think this week, was it? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was a uh, Pray for the Winch to Come. Oh yes, that one. Yeah, that's a, yeah. another great representation of the album as well. Yeah, the, the, I think it would have been a bit trickier. Like, uh, there was a couple of songs I wouldn't have released as the first single, but uh, yeah, this one is pretty good because it's... Uh, like it could be from our previous album so it's, uh, it isn't too different even though there's uh, like uh, somewhat different songs on the album uh, so very true well uh thank you ken for uh, taking the time to do this interview uh i've been such a huge fan of the band for so long and i'm hoping sometime in 2016 i will be able to see you guys live after you guys just put out such a great album with songs from the north is there anything else that you'd like to mention that i haven't brought up yet um uh, I don't really know. Like, <laughs> it's a, the, thanks for like having us, and uh, uh, I hope to like be. I, I hope that we will play as soon as possible in states. Like, we've always loved it there.